So welcome to the TTRS Coupe. If you watched my previous video with the Roadster, you'll know how much fun I had in that car. But ultimately, this is the one that appeals to me the most. And if I was in the market for something like this, it would be the Coupe. Now, what's cool about this car is we're on track with it so we can give it some stick. And also, it is fitted with carbon ceramic brakes, so we can really give it some stick. Idea initially is that we're gonna be following pace car, which is happening right now. Um, and then I've got three laps. I have to come into the pits on each lap, but I still have three laps. And then we're just gonna find out what this car's all about. So, I'm familiar with the car from driving the Roadster. We know it's got a great twin clutch gearbox, but we now have uprated brakes and a circuit in which to really play with it and see uh, what it's like under a little bit of pressure. So yeah, without further ado, pace car is going out now. I believe I have Mr. Shmi 150 in front of me. Yeah, all of a sudden, these cars, they, they come alive when you can really get up them, you know? Now, I think I'm the last person to get in this car today. So I must be aware that it's been fairly well spanked. Although having said that, the bite of these brakes is still completely fine. And tires don't feel spongy either. So it's still a fairly fair comparison to how a fresh car would be, I think. It feels that way anyway. And they, I mean, this sounds really good. It sounds such a great car. I mean, it revs to 7,000, so it's not a super high revving car, but equally with it being turbocharged and five cylinder, there's plenty of torque. Audi have done a lot towards weight saving on this car. Now, while it's not strictly a track car, it's still more focused than your average TT. And it feels light on its toes. It's around 1,500 kilograms so you know not ultra light but equally not ultra heavy either and on track it feels light it feels nice on its toes most importantly from my experience with Audis is this doesn't seem to suffer from understeer which is eternally refreshing I mean and the pace car is not hanging around and I tell you what even though this is a turbocharged car, Audi have worked some miracles with this gearbox. It, it spools up so nicely upon downshifts. One thing I find is I keep hitting the buttons on the steering wheel, which is a bit frustrating. Okay, so now we started to pick up the pace. It doesn't so much as understeer as when you get on the throttle, it tends to pull you through the corner. It's not an uncomfortable feeling, but it's definitely dialed in to be a bit safer than if it was to oversteer. Speaking of oversteer, this thing has eternal grip. I mean, grip for days. I think you'd have trouble having a good time drifting in this car. It's very much calibrated to just be efficiently driven, pick the right lines and mash that throttle and rely on the quattro just pulling you through every corner. Yeah, it's starting to get good now, tires are getting sticky. Whoop, whoop, yes. It's a great car, it's great, great fun. Now, speed-wise, it's important to remember where this car sits in the market price-wise because it's easy to want to compare it against higher-end sports cars. But, you know, this really is up against perhaps a Cayman BMW M3, something like that. Um, and having driven both of those cars, the performance that this thing offers for the money, performance per pound, is impressive. And there's one thing being on a dry, sticky racetrack in Spain, but 
these cars, this Quattro system comes into its own in conditions which are terrible. <laughs> you know, so back in England, where most of the time, every time I turn on a camera, it starts raining. And I'm always thankful when I get in the RS6 and I want to do some filming and it just puts the power down and you just don't really have any worries about having to manage grip levels like you do in something like your M4, which I gotta tell you, in the wet, an M4 is not where it's at. This is great fun, man, it's great, great fun. And despite it not being a dedicated track car, I'm still having so much fun in it. And this is what it's all about, isn't it? You know, when we talk about any car like this, it's all about, does it put a smile on your face? And if it does, you're winning. You're absolutely winning. And to be fair, with the TTRS, you could drive to the track in fast comfort with your beautiful sound system. And then you can have a really good day on track, grip and all, and then to drive home again, having had a fun day and a big smile on your face. So with that in mind, Audi's done a great thing. This is my last lap now in the TT RS Coupe. What can I say? There's nothing, you know, I can't be overly critical with it because it's, it's a great car. The last two things to talk about are brakes and turbo lag. Let's start with the brakes on this particular car. These are the optional carbon ceramic upgrades. You know, needless to say, they're fantastic. I haven't had a single bit of fade yet. Um, it's a hot day and I'm, I'm giving it some stick and it feels great. Um, I obviously can't speak for the steel rotors, but obviously they aren't gonna be as good as these brakes and uh, you're gonna have more unsprung weight. Turbo lag, now we're in a modern day turbocharged era, but even with that, there is still a bit more lag than I might have expected from the TTRS. Off the line when you floor your foot, it does take a second or two for that boost to build, for the turbo to spool up and it shoots you out. Once it's on boost, it's great. There's loads of torque and it's very responsive. But if you don't, if you just maybe haven't snatched the gear at exactly the right time, you could fall foul of being in the sort of lag pit, as it were, and you have to wait. Like right now, I'm, and then it comes on cam. I didn't expect that from such a modern day turbocharged car. And I guess that lastly ties into engine. When this thing is static and you rev it, there's lots of pops and bangs and barbels. But funnily enough, when you drive it under heavy braking or lift off overrun, there's not an ounce of popping, banging, crackling, barbling anywhere. Whether that's right or wrong, I don't know, but my take, your inner RS performance model Audi, and I think even if it's augmented drama, things like that really add to the feel and excitement of being in a car like this. That was it, man. That was my first drive in the TT RS Coupe, and it was on track, and it was an opportunity to get to absolutely pound that thing. In respect of the optional carbon ceramic brakes, which really helped. Just every turn of the wheel in it has been uh, amazing. The gearbox, proper twin clutch, seven speed box. Um, and I'm really impressed with the way they've managed to make that turbocharged engine spool up under heavy braking and downshifts. It is a thing to behold. But my favorite thing is the fact that it's basically half a V10. Audi's five cylinder engines have such a unique tone and I've been listening to these cars driving in and out all day and of course experience being in one myself and it just sounds like a baby R8 V10. It sounds so good. 
and the new styling upgrades to make it look fantastic. So yeah, all in all, a brilliant experience, uh, both on road and track. If you're watching this video for the first time, I did a video on the RS Roadster. So if you haven't seen that one yet, be sure to go back and check out that because both of these cars are as good on track as they are on road. Yeah, and that's about it. I've got to say a massive thank you as well to Audi UK for flying me out here for this experience. It's been stupendous. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Ciao.